What's going on guys? Caution Crazy here. I'm bringing you another video, even though the last video hasn't even been edited yet, but that's because CapCut on mobile sucks. So we're going to be editing both of the videos on a PC. So you'll probably get some videos back to back. But today I want to talk about the future of Leech games and what I am hoping to see after Rebirth of Souls, assuming it sells well and, say, Bandai Namco realizes that Bleach is not just a one-off game. They can turn this into a whole series, and I'm not just talking of Rebirth of Souls, but I'm talking more genres of games. Think Dragon Ball. You have games like Budokai Tenkaichi, you have games like Dragon Ball Fighters. You have games like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot or Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Xenoverse would be a cool idea in Bleach if you could pick your, your race and you can make a create a character and then use different abilities from different characters. But the way that Bleach works, you know, everybody's abilities are pretty much tied to their Zanpakuto and no two Zanpakuto can exist. It, you know, especially now, knowing what we know from Thousand Year Blood of War, the Zanpakuto itself is a part of the Soul Reaper. It's not its own separate being, so you can't just pull two Hyorin Marus, like the Diamond Dust Rebellion, that just would not happen, that cannot exist. So Dragon Ball Xenoverse would be difficult because how are we going to get, you know, customizable abilities that don't already exist within another Zanpakuto? And also, the way Zanpakuto work, there can only be a certain type of a Zanpakuto. So, Ryujin Jaka is a fire-based Zanpakuto, though I guess it's a bad example because, well, his Bankai is not necessarily completely fire-based, unless you consider the Flames of Hell as fire-based, and that's where the skulls come from. But, not what we're talking about. Say, Hyori Maru. Good example. Ice type Zanpakuto, you would never catch him using lightning or uh, even water, right? He can control water, but he controls it by freezing it. Same thing with Rukia and Sodeno Shiryuki. Her Zanpakuto is a little bit different from Toshiro's now because we have context. It actually lowers her body temperature and allows her to freeze surrounding areas by using her blade as an extension of herself. So we want to make sure that nothing feels off. Right, so my idea for the best Bleach game that we could get would be Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, but Bleach. And now I want to get into some key points that I have written down. I will go over the uh, the main points, the sub points, and then kind of give my thoughts, and we'll move on to the next. This will help kind of keep the video a little bit more structured than I usually do. So let's just get into it. So what, first we're gonna start with the visuals and art style. Of course, I think that Rebirth of Souls looks amazing. I think if they just adapt that same art style and animation style into a game like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, or we'll call it Bleach Ichigo. I don't know what we'll call it. They're gonna have a different name for it because Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, it kind of makes sense, but Bleach Ichigo doesn't really make sense. Working title name, we're going to refer to it as Bleach Ichigo instead of just saying Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So if I say Bleach Ichigo, just know that's what I'm referring to. So the art style needs to maintain the visual consistency with Thousand Year Blood War and Rebirth of Souls to make it seem like everything is within the same ecosystem, the same uh, universe, right? So Rebirth of Souls is that 1v1 style. And then you have Bleach Ichigo, where you have an open world, few different regions or realms to visit, world of the living, Wiggle Mundo, and all that good stuff. And again, I'll, I'll get into the areas later. We're just talking about visuals right now. But we want to keep it consistent. We want everything to look good going from game to game and not be too jarring. You don't want to go from cell shaded to anime style to realistic. I mean, the worst looking models for the characters are from Jump Force. And I, I don't say worst looking in terms of like actual accuracy it's just the translation of anime to semi-realistic just doesn't work well for bleach i think bleach excels with that anime style and they can take it and really do something great with it so i think keeping that consistency with rebirth of souls and thousand year blood war is key to a successful game not maybe as important as other areas that we'll discuss but still an important topic okay 
Next, we'll move on to the gameplay mechanics. Again, so similar to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot with the open world elements, allowing the player to actually explore different realms like Soul Society, World of the Living, Waco Mundo, and the Soul Palace, and then have like random encounters, similar to how Dragon Ball Z Kakarot has the uh, Red Ribbon Army soldiers and the Frieza soldiers, right? So if you're in the World of the Living, you might get attacked by a hollow. Or same thing that goes in if you're in Waco Mundo, it might be a hollow or an, a round car, like not uh, not an Espada, because those are named characters, but you can have a Huchas attack you, or you could even face some new Vasto Lorde. So no new characters per se, but maybe new boss enemies, just new hollow types, right? Semi-named characters, I guess. In the world of the living, it's going to be pretty easy. Soul Society, a little bit harder. You get to Waco Mundo, a little bit more hard. You get to Thousand Year Blood War, very hard. And if we can progress past that, at this point we have no idea where we can go from here. All we know is that the enemies of hell are called ghouls. And they're like the opposite of hollows. It's like the rings, they have rings on the outside of their body instead of a hollow hole on the inside. Right? They kind of look angelic, but like biblically accurate angels, in a sense, right? In terms of the actual random encounters, Soul Society would have just random foot soldiers, or the living hollows, like Omundo, hollows on a run car, and then for the Soul Palace, the random encounters are Quincy foot soldiers. That makes sense, right? Because the only reason why we're in the Soul Palace is to protect them from the Quincy's, right? And you might even have, you know, maybe not the Stern Ritter, but you could have named Quincy. That would be like boss characters. So I think that would be an interesting thing to do and that kind of flows into the next category of characters. The player characters should be a limited roster, right? You don't wanna overwhelm the players, especially if you're going to introduce skill trees and different game mechanics. It should be the main cast. What they would want to do, ideally, is go through the story of Bleach and see which characters are utilized the most. Obviously Ichigo. I would say Uryu as well, and that would also play into the story element because Uryu will end up leaving your affiliation, leaving your group, once you get to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. So you would actually lose that character and it would be kind of fun because that character could maintain the skill tree that the player put in. So if the player wants to play as Uryu the whole game as much as they can and just keeps leveling them up, by the time Thousand Year Blood War happens, Uryu could actually be a beast. Like he could be one of the hardest characters to beat because you've actually been progressing his skill tree and neglecting other characters. So it would add an element of you kind of have to know the story but also it adds an element of surprise for those who don't know the story, who are just playing the game now, haven't watched Thousand Year Blood War. They like Uryu, they remember him from the original series, and they want to play with a ranged character. They can do that, but eventually it will come back to bite them, right? Um, and we could also have some way for you to kind of have to level them up in order to make them usable. So, basically, by the time Thousand Year Blood War happens, Uryu will have, you know, an ideal level of stats, where if you were to just put in the skill points to make him viable during Soul Society Waco Mundo, then in the Thousand Year Blood War, he wouldn't be that powerful. But if you did use him as a main, then when he, lo when he leaves your party, you're gonna have to fight what you put into. And I think that's a nice little element. Other characters we can include, I would say Chad could be a potential, but he doesn't do much in the story. He only has two or three or four real fights, and then he doesn't really do much. So I think he might be relegated to a Yamcha level. I think Yamcha wasn't playable, if I remember correctly, but anybody that's not playable in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, and we'll get into this later, has that community tree thing where you can link the characters together and you get different bonuses based on what characters are linked together. Again, we'll get into that later, but in terms of the characters, should definitely be the people who are used the most. So Ichigo, Rukia, I would even argue Byakuya is a main character. Yoroichi could be a main character. Um, I would not say Kisuke, 
because he doesn't do much until Thousand Year Blood War, or they can introduce him in Thousand Year Blood War as a playable character, because at that point, you know, he does do a little bit more. And he can start with a set of base stats, you know, that don't need, you know, you're not starting from zero, you're starting from whatever your your highest level in your squad is, or maybe lowest level, no, probably highest level would make the most sense. So if you leveled up Ichigo to level 60, as soon as you unlock Urahara, he's level 60. He doesn't have anything in his skill tree, but he does have, you know, his base abilities, and then you can build on that. It'd be a fun element. Having different characters that are playable at different times would also help alleviate some of that overwhelmingness of having too many characters to choose from, and also the fact that it's story-based, right? So, you know, Byakuya doesn't fight Aizen. He doesn't. Byakuya does not fight Aizen. So, having Byakuya there fighting Aizen would be kind of weird. He's still in Waco Mundo. He doesn't get back to uh, Soul Society until after the war is finished. So, wouldn't really make sense. Though we could have a playable character in Waco Mundo. So you could have different areas during the story be locked to certain character rosters. Uh, that's another idea. Or you can just have the main cast of characters that are used the most. And that's the only playable characters. The rest of them go into that community tab where you could put them together. Like Squad 11 would go with Squad 11, uh, Squad 10, and vice versa, and, and, and so on and so forth. Right? Same thing with Quincy's. You know, Uryu could be a. I don't know how they would label the group, but it could be Ichigo's group, but he's also affiliated with Quincy. So if he is there with Yuha, because Yuha probably won't be a playable character, are the enemies in the community? I don't think so. They're just enemies. Again, it's been a long time since I played DBZ Kakarot. I did beat the game. It's not like I, I have that you know ingrained into my brain. So we're going to move on to uh, the characters. So down to the support system. That is what I was talking about with that community tab. So having different groups, you could have all of the squads or you could just do Soul Reaper. You, can, you know, you could do races, I guess. Soul Reaper, Hollow, Quincy, Human, right? So Ichigo and Uryu would both affiliate with Human, Ichigo would affiliate with Soul Reaper, and Uryu would affiliate with Quincy. So it would be similar to how BBS does it, where they can have two affiliations depending on, you know, what type of character they are. So somebody like Kenpachi would have the Soul Reaper affiliation and the Squad 11 affiliation. And then in terms of new characters, no new, like, original characters, just boss types. So like I said before, named Hollows, named Quincy's, maybe even named foot soldiers that are going to be a little bit more powerful than just the basic random encounters. Moving on to the next section is setting and story. So I think from Ichigo meeting Rukia to the defeat of Yuha, that should be what we're focused on, right? With the option for DLC later to adapt the light novels and any other material that comes out from between now and the time that this game would come out. That also gives Taite Kubo a lot of time to create the Hell Arc if that's something that they plan on doing as Shonen Jump. That's something they plan on continuing is that one shot and turning it into a new serialized manga. Then we could eventually adapt that as a new arc. We have the light novels that can be adapted into, into new arcs or into new DLC. And that could also take off some of the strain from the animation team. If we can get the, like, can't fear your own world, and then you have Shuhei, you know, he's not in the uh, main game, he's not going to be a playable character. But then you get the DLC, and similar to how you unlock Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, even though that's in the skill tree, you will now unlock Shuhei as a playable character, and the roster of characters would reflect Can't Fear Your Own World. And then, again, that would take some of the strain off of the animation team making anime because they won't have to focus on adapting the story right now. Later down the line, if they want to do that, they can. But if we stick with the same animation and art style, and it almost looks like we're playing an anime game, like we're playing an, playing an anime, then there won't be so much strain or demand, I should say. There won't be so much demand for the light novels to be animated because we did get them adapted and we do get to see what they look like inside of the world of Leech. And you could even argue that it might be better than just watching an anime because you get to play through the hardest points and live through those deep topics that they have. Now, the thing is with games, they do have to cut some material. There's no way they're going to be able to adapt all of it. So if that DLC sells well, that could also show Bandai, which Bandai 
Bandai, assuming Bandai is making it, they and then Bandai could show uh, Studio Piero, hey, can't fear in your own world, or spirits are forever with you. These DLC are selling really well. It seems like there's high demand for these to be adapted, and by that time, they might have more anime finished. So whether that's uh, a continuation of the Hell Arc being adapted, or maybe the uh, the other light novels, just the uh, spirits are forever with you, or, or we do not always love you. I believe is the wedding one. So if we have that, that would be interesting as a just a little filler type of anime OVA deal. Maybe it doesn't have to be a whole season. I would be okay with uh, like a two hour, hour and a half, hour, 45 minute feature uh, adapting. We do not always love you. But something like Can't Fit in Your Own World, they did drop a lot of lore and also added some elements that are some explanations for that was in your blood of war that makes that more cohesive. Uh, moving on to number five is multiplayer and online features. Straight up call it how it is. No multiplayer. There was no multiplayer in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Multiplayer is a hard thing to add. And then you also have to add in the element of balancing of character versus character. It's easy to create a an enemy type and you know it's a very controlled setting. You know, you're gonna fight Ice and you're gonna fight Yuha, you're gonna fight Byakuya, but the computer, you know, the algorithm or the AI, I guess if you want to call it, that controls the characters are, is predetermined. The moves that they use may be random, but it's it's predetermined. You can learn how the AIs fight. And you can also factor in their individual fighting styles. So whereas a player versus player element, the players can pick how they want to play the character. But when you're fighting against somebody like Byakuya, he's cool, calm, and collected. Uh, you're fighting somebody again like Grimjow. He is aggressive. If you have somebody who's playing as Grimjow, but he's not aggressive, or if you have somebody who's playing as Byakuya, but he's super aggressive, then there's a little bit of a disconnect. Whereas with a PvE experience, they can control every minute detail of how each enemy type interacts with the player. And also, you don't have to worry about online servers. This game can always stay up you won't have to be tied to a live service. You won't have to worry about servers going down. Bleach can always be playable in some form or fashion when it's a single player only experience. Don't wanna to spend too much time on this topic because there's really not much to say. No multiplayer, focus on single player. That would be the way to polish the game the most. And then down the line, if they wanna add some kind of DLC game mode where you can take in your character, sure, that could be an afterthought, but in terms of developing the main game, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is definitely the way to go. It's the model to go off of. It's just a, it's a really good game. I think it sold well, and it really, really did justice for the immersion and the retelling of the story of Dragon Ball, while also adding some of those filler missions back in where Dragon Ball Z Kai removed all filler even like the snake road and and the, that queen the princess girl I'm, I'm pretty sure that's a side story in dragon ball z kakarot i could be mistaken again i haven't played it in a couple of years so i don't remember exactly but bottom line is single player only will allow for the developers to focus solely on the game mechanics and the actual setting and making the game feel immersive I want to feel what Ichigo and Uryu and Chad felt when they were in Waco Mundo trying to head to Lost Noches and feeling like, man, this is going to take days. And then you finally encounter Nell and then uh, later, you, you know, you got Bawa Bawa and they expedite that, that experience. And if we're going to do open world element, you could even have the Forest of Hollows where they fight uh, Rudaganga, I believe his name was, and, or, or, yeah, I believe it was Rudaganga, and they fall down into the Forest of Hollows, and they meet Ashigo, or something like that, Some, the guy with the red hair, and he is technically canon, because he appeared at the end of a chapter in, in the Bleach manga, so you could add him as an optional side character, a side mission, inside of Waco Mundo. I was gonna say it does play into the story, but it doesn't, it is filler. So you could really go back and do that anytime you want. You could do it when it happens in Bleach, but it could always just be a random encounter where you got Rudaganga, and if you fail to defeat him, or you fall into the quicksand, then you end up in a lower level in that hollow forest, called the Menos Forest, where you had a ton of Menos Grande, 
and Ashigo. We're gonna call him Ashigo because I don't remember his name. He was a cool character, but he was just relegated to like one or two filler episodes and then done. Definitely a potential for more story there. Let's move on. In terms of customization and progression, similar to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, we should have skill trees that allow for the player to put their skill points into certain elements. So if you want Ichigo to have stronger Getsugas, or if you want him to be faster, you can have a little bit of control over that. And then each person's skill tree will be based on their typical attributes. So you wouldn't have Kenpachi be a Keto user. He wouldn't ever learn Keto. Same thing with Ichigo. There would be no way for him to learn Keto because he never does that. Uh, but somebody like Rukia and uh, Byakuya, they could have a skill tree, a keto skill tree, where they can learn different keto spells. And we can even give them more spells than they actually use in the anime, because all keto is, is a control over reishi and knowing the incantations. So there's no reason, other than spiritual pressure, why Byakuya couldn't use Kurohitsugi. He d he's a captain, he has a very high level of spiritual pressure, and he has good reishi control. He is known for being one of the top keto users. He's seen using Keto the most, both Hado and Bakura. The Keto spells are going to be relegated to Keto users. Here's Anjutsu techniques would be limited to, say, Kenpachi would have more potential to increase his Zanjutsu because that's what he focuses on, is the way of the sword. And then maybe even Hakura because he is a strong guy. So he can punch you, he can kick you, and he can slice you but he's not gonna be shooting you with keto spells. And then character customization kinda ties into the characters, but I have it down here with progression because throughout the story, you may unlock certain outfits, certain different styles for the characters, different hairstyles that, they, that we see in the anime. And then you could always go back and use previous styles if you wanted to. You have a, a good example is when they go to, during the Ronkar, the beginning of the Ronkar arc, when they have the uh, the group of Soul Reapers, you got Hitsugaya's group with uh, Rangiku, Yumichika, Ikaku. They come in and they join an Ichigo school, so they have the school uniforms. That would be fun to add. Along with that, anime intros, they usually do a lot of different styles for anime intros, where they have them in like maybe a spy or just casual wear. You know, even Asterisk, the first Bleach intro ever released, has all the characters in some pretty fancy drip. So it would be nice to get some of that in the game as optional character outfits that you could use. And there's no reason why you couldn't use the character in their, their form with that outfit. I mean, technically, yes, when you become a Soul Reaper, when you either pop in your your uh, Konpaku and you know, separate from your Gigai, or you do what Ichigo does and, and just use your combat pass, or you use Kone, you would be able to use your abilities even though you have your new outfit on. I don't think that would be too lore breaking. And again, it would be completely optional at that point. It would just be outfits you unlock. Or they could implement it to where they, when they are in Gi Guy form, that's the costumes that they use. And then when they enter into battle or into their Soul Reaver form, maybe make that an at will type of deal then that's when they would just get their Shihak show and that would be it. That's pretty much all I have for the points. Now I just want to take this last bit of section here to talk about potential for different story elements and things that could be adapted. So will the filler arcs be adapted? I don't think that are necessarily going to be adapted, but that doesn't mean that they can't be adapted. The problem with the Bount arc is it lasted too long. If it didn't last that long, it would actually be a fun watch. Playing through it, that wouldn't be so bad. You cut out a lot of the filler, leave in the stuff that makes sense to the progression of that filler arc, and then you have your conclusion. Same thing with all of the filler arcs. The Zanpak Toe arc, that was super cool. And to be able to fight now, it would be harder for them to do because they'd have to create models for at least 26 characters because there's 13 squads. You got a captain and lieutenant in each squad. And then some of those squads have seated officers that do have names on Pacto, right? So at least 26 new characters would have to be created, not necessarily be playable, but they would have to be created as an enemy type. And then they could be added to the skill tree or the, the community tree later. The Ray Guy arc, super easy only two characters that you really have to add nozomi and uh what's his name the dude you know you guys know the dude yeah so you would be able to just take the models of the characters and then give them blue eyes basically 
and then a little bit of lightning. The I don't really think it's necessary to have the Suna Yashiro arc. I mean, if they want to do fan service, then yes, implementing because people don't like filler or they didn't like the filler while it was airing. But I think now that it's finished, like a lot of things, like the Star Wars prequels, looking back on it, it's not so bad. It's it, right. It's actually pretty. It's a pretty fun watch. The issue was it's taking away from the main story. In a video game setting, you wouldn't have that issue. That would be completely optional. Do you want to do the Suni Yashiro arc thing or not? That's an oh no, that that's the Zanpakuto Rebellion, right? That's Muramasa and Koga Kuchiki. So that would be interesting. And I believe Koga was even mentioned in like Can't Feel Your Own World or something, or Muramasa was mentioned something like that so the sword itself of muramasa does exist so maybe instead of adapting that art maybe they can consult with kubo and see what his ideas for muramasa would be right what he would actually want it doesn't have to be the zanpakuto rebellion art it could be a completely different character that has muramasa uh, there's so much potential that they could do. It's just a matter of we have to support Bleach Rebirth of Souls so that way they can see that there is potential to make money because at the end of the day, money is what rules everything. So if they're making money from Rebirth of Souls, then that's a higher probability that we'll actually get future games and they'll try to experiment. Now they are experimenting with Rebirth of Souls. It's not a copy and paste of anything we've seen before. It does have its own unique elements and I think that's amazing. Now what we need is a little bit of copying, or we'll just call it copying. It's not going to copy it, but adapting, like I said, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Or eventually, they could do like a Dragon Ball Fighters, like a Bleach Fighters, where if you had Arxis creating the game, it would look amazing. I mean, it, that would be the best way to translate anime to video game, and I'll say it. I, I don't know if I've said it before in any videos, but I'll say it now. Dragon Ball Fighters is one of the best looking anime games because they leaned so heavily into that 2.5D aspect and the actual anime art style. So it looks amazing. Like if you took out the UI and everything, you'd be like, oh, what episode of Dragon Ball Z is this? But it's not, it's a game, right? Or Dragon Ball Super, whatever. The point being, there's so much potential for Bleach. Bleach has such a rich lore that they could tap into and it would work very well for video games. I mean, Bleach kind of is like a video game. You have different levels. You unlock Shikai and Bankai or Volt Standig or Resurrection or Resurrection, right? You have many opportunities to progress your characters. And at the same time, there are certain story beats where things will naturally progress on their own. Like, you won't have to unlock Ichigo's Bankai. Or if you do, it's going to be with your Uichi. There's going to be a mission where you're actually fighting um, Zangetsu. And you have to, you know, maybe they can adapt it slightly differently, right? Or, here's the best example. That most of that was off screen. So make it on screen. What did we actually miss? How did he achieve Bankai? What did it look like when that happened? There's so much potential to expand on the story for all of the off screen things. There's a lot of off screen things in Bleach that could be adapted into a video game, and that would help keep, or, or, or it would help make everything complete. You would have the whole pie there, not just the pieces. Uh, and trying to straggle them together, everything could be one cohesive story. I don't think there's really much left I have to talk about. I don't want to make this a 20-30 minute video. Let's see where we're at right now. We're at 37 minutes, so I'm definitely going to edit this. I'm going to cut this down, and I'm going to throw on some, some gameplay, and then a couple of different images from different games like Kakarot, DPC Fighters, to give you guys an idea of what we actually want to see. Or at least what I want to see. But Bleach Ichigo. Well, Bleach Fighters would be good too. But Bleach Ichigo is definitely my my top. That's that's would be the next game that I want to be made. That is peak Bleach right there. Peak Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is just a fun game to play. It's fun to get lost in the world. Sometimes when I was playing the game, I wouldn't even do the story missions or the side missions. I would just be reveling in the fact that I'm able to explore wherever I want. Now, we're also in the era where we're at the PS5 and we're at NVMe, uh, M.2 NVMe technology. So 
you could even have it to where the either there are loading screens or you could just open up a Senkaimon or open up a Garganta and enter into those different realms real time and with the Garganta it would be fun because you would watch your character you can move whatever direction you want and then underneath you you know you'd be creating a path and then you could look back and you'd be like hi I made this funny path right or if you enter maybe like for soul society like if you, you you could get permission to enter and then you have to wait like a certain period of time before you're allowed to pass or you can enter the don guy alone or the precipice world right alone or on your own volition and risk you know dying to the cleaner that would be kind of interesting or trying to outrun the cleaner and the more maybe speed stat you have would in help increase your movement speed or if you have um flash step or healing kyaku you can put the actual skill points into that to make yourself faster so that way if you do enter the precipice world you can actually outrun the cleaner but there's just so much potential for them to make a awesome bleach game and i'm really looking forward to rebirth of souls but i'm more looking forward to the future of post rebirth of souls what we're going to get going forward what can we possibly get and i think what i've gone over today is a good basis for a new bleach game but yeah that's all i really got for you today so i hope you guys enjoy this video i'm sorry that it took so long that's pretty much how my videos go they're always long but i like to cover every single possibility or every single element that i can and trust me this is going to be cut down by a lot you're not going to see the 40 minutes that this video is it's probably going to be closer to 20. With all of the cuts that I'm going to make and the long pauses that I've had, you're not going to see that 40 minute mark. But again, that's all I really got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Caution out.